Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, I've got another 41 game benchmark for you. Uh, this time comparing the GeForce RTX 2060 Super to the Radeon RX 5700 XT. Last week, I did compare the 5700 non-XT model to the 2060 Super. So that was a $350 Radeon GPU versus a $400 GeForce GPU. Now, despite the fact that I made the price difference abundantly clear in that video and heavily focused on cost per frame when making my conclusion, a conclusion which I might add was in favor of the Radeon RX 5700, uh, how do I put this? Very loyal AMD fans they still managed to lose their minds over the $50 price discrepancy. Now, I should just clarify that some of you were genuinely interested in why that comparison was being made and felt that the 5700 XT would have been a better matchup given the similar pricing. And yeah, well, that's fair enough. Unfortunately, though, there were some, there always are, some that went a bit overboard and claimed things like we were paid by Nvidia to try and make the RTX 2060 Super look good. But yeah, as I said, you're always gonna run into that, so whatever. That said, I did find those claims a bit puzzling. I suppose those people don't really bother watching the full video. They just get angry about one thing I've said and fly to the comment section to let me uh, know all about it. But yeah, a bit puzzling because as I said in the conclusion, I picked the 5700 as the better buy. Uh, I said that ray tracing support isn't a selling point of the 2060 Super. That's obviously not something NVIDIA are going to pay me to say or uh, are going to be happy for me to say in a paid video, but whatever. Uh, and yeah, I basically just said that ray tracing was a write-off for that product, simply not powerful enough to take full advantage. Anyway, circling back, yes, a more apples to apples price comparison uh, would have been between the 5700 XT and 2060 Super, as both come in at an MSRP of $400 US. But as I explained in the 5700 XT versus the 2070 Super video, so that was quite a few weeks ago now, uh, leading up to that video, I created a few polls on our Patreon account, and it turned out based on not just the poll, but also the feedback, the comments below the poll from the Patreon members that they were more interested in seeing what AMD could offer at the cheaper price point. Like how close did they get to matching NVIDIA's more expensive options? And as it turns out, the answer was very bloody close. Anyway, in an effort to please everyone, I've spent another two days updating the results with the 5700 XT. So technically we now have the 5700 and 5700 XT versus the 2060 Super. I don't expect there'll be any real surprises here. So I'm just gonna quickly blast through the results before getting to the big breakdown graphs where we look at all 41 games. Once again, representing AMD, we have the Power Color Red Devil, the XT version, of course, but we're actually using the Power Color Red Devil for both the 5700 and 5700 XT, as that was the graphics card we used previously. And of course, once again, representing Nvidia, we have the MSI RTX 2060 Super Gaming X graphics card, also, please note that I'm not going to show thermal data in this video as it's not a graphics card review, but rather a look at GPU performance. Also be aware, stuff like operating temperatures will vary quite a bit depending on the AIB model tested. Speaking of testing, our Core i9 9900K GPU test rig has been used. The CPU has been overclocked to five gigahertz and features 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3400 memory. All testing takes place at 1080p and 1440p, and as usual, rather than go over all 41 graphs here, we'll look at around a dozen closely and then jump into the performance breakdown graphs. For all the graphs, all 41 of them, please jump over to our Patreon page where you can find them for free. Again, the link will be in the video description. Okay, let's get into it. Once again, I'll start with Borderlands 3, and given this is a title where the 5700 beat the 2060 Super previously, it should come as little surprise to anyone that the XT model is even faster, beating the GeForce GPU by a 25% margin at 1440p. The Gears 5 results are a bit interesting. At 1080p, the XT version is 14% faster than the standard 5700, but at 1440p, it was just 9% faster. I suspect memory bandwidth is an issue at the higher resolution. This means whereas the XT version was 24% faster than the 2060 Super at 1080p, it was just 15% faster at 1440p, though admittedly that is still a decent margin on its own. Now, whereas the 5700 was either on par or slower than the 2060 Super when it came to testing with Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the XT model has a clear performance advantage, offering 12% more frames at 1080p and a whopping 25% more at 1440p. So a very strong result here for the 5700 XT. 
Moving on here, we see a 12% performance boost for the XT model over the standard 5700 when testing with Forza Horizon 4, and this meant that it was 21% faster than the 2060 Super. We see a very similar performance margin at 1440p as well. Here, the 5700 XT beat the GeForce GPU by a 19% margin. Next up we have World War Z, and given the 5700 was already quite a bit faster here, this one is a very easy win for the 5700 XT. Here it beat the RTX 2060 Super by a whopping 26% margin at 1080p, and things looked very much the same at 1440p as well. The standard 5700 was roughly on par with the GeForce GPU when testing with Battlefield 5, and this gives the XT model a clear performance advantage, offering 13% more frames at 1080p and 17% more at 1440p, so again, another very easy win here for AMD. This time we see despite beating the 5700 in Apex Legends, the 2060 Super can't do the same to the XT model. There is only 5 FPS in it at both tested resolutions, but still the 5700 XT was faster. AMD appears very dominant in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, so if you're after maximum FPS, the 5700 XT is the way to go at the $400 US price point, as it offered almost 30% more performance at 1440p. F1 2019 saw the 5700 and 2060 Super deliver comparable performance at both tested resolutions, and this allowed the XT model to provide 11% more frames at 1080p, and 15% more at 1440p, so another comfortable win here for the 5700 XT. Previously when testing the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, the 5700 was a whisker slower than the 2060 Super. The XT version on the other hand though was 9% faster at 1080p and 8% faster at 1440p, but it did offer considerably stronger 1% low performance at the higher resolution. Here we have another example in Wolfenstein Youngblood, where the 5700 was slower than the 2060 Super, but the XT version is able to correct that, winning by a 6% margin at 1080p and 8% at 1440p. For those of you unaware, I recently published a big Fortnite benchmark covering a wide range of AMD and Nvidia GPUs for the Chapter 2 update. These are the results for the 5700, 5700 XT and 2060 Super from that video, as there's no need to update them as I only just did that benchmark as I said. And this is one of those rare instances where the GeForce GPU matches the 5700 XT. Strange Brigade has been a strange game for AMD. For a long time they dominated this title, but today with the Turing-based GPUs from NVIDIA, uh, they seem to offer more consistent performance. The 2060 Super, for example, was slower than the 5700 XT when comparing the average frame rate, but it did offer better 1% low performance. Overall though, the gaming experience was much the same using either GPU. Here we see that the 5700 XT makes up a lot of ground on the 2060 Super in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and despite being a little slower at 1080p, the Radeon GPU does take over at 1440p, offering 5% more performance. Even when testing with Project Cars 2, a game that typically favours the green team, the 5700 XT is able to beat the 2060 Super, this time by an 11% margin at 1080p, though it was just 6% faster at 1440p. And finally, we'll just take a quick look at World of Tanks before breaking down all 41 games. And here we see that the 5700 XT is able to edge out the 2060 Super, though it's a little down at 1440p when looking at the 1% low performance. Still, overall, strong performance from the Radeon GPU. I'm very keen now to see how the 5700 XT and 2060 Super stack up across all 41 games, particularly given the GeForce GPU was just 3-4% faster than the standard 5700 in our previous video. Anyway, let's take a look starting with the 1080p data. Okay, so at 1080p, across all 41 games, the RTX 2060 Super was found to be 9% slower on average when compared to the 5700 XT. Not only that, but the 5700 XT was the more consistent performer, coming up short in just three of the games tested. Moreover, the 2060 Super won by more than a 5% margin in just a single title. Meanwhile, it was slower by more than a 5% margin in 28 of the 41 games tested. And additionally, it was slower by a 10% or greater margin in 20 of the games. So again, a convincing win here for the 5700 XT. The 1440p results are all much the same. In fact, the 5700 XT looks better here, despite the average dropping by a percent. The 2060 Super was now, at best, just 3% faster, with insignificant wins in just two titles and equalized performance in a further three titles. 
This time, the 2060 Super was slower by a 10% or greater margin in 17 of the games tested. So again, a convincing win for the 5700 XT. Now, here's a quick look at the cost per frame data. And as you can see, in terms of value, the 5700 and 5700 XT are very much the same. In fact, they're identical using our 1440p data. And what this means is at 1440p, you'll actually be paying an 11% premium for the RTX 2060 Super over either of the 5700 series GPUs. Then at 1080p, the 2060 Super costs 12% more per frame over the 5700 and 10% more over the 5700 XT. Once again, if you're looking for maximum value, you want to get the most out of your dollar, then it's the Radeon RX 5700 series that delivers. As you just saw, the 5700 XT offers at least 10% more bang for your buck when compared to the RTX 2060 Super, so it's a pretty open and shut case. Get the 5700 XT and enjoy the extra frames. Or I suppose you could save a little bit of money and get the non-XT model, which can be tuned up with bias flashing or a few other methods to get 5700 XT light performance. That said, what are some of the reasons why you might opt for the slower 2060 Super instead? Well, for one, the 2060 Super does consume less power and will reduce total system consumption by at least 10%, but I suppose it was also 10% slower. So not exactly an efficiency improvement there and don't expect to notice that difference on your power bill, but typically you're looking at a 25% reduction in consumption for the graphics card itself, and that does mean most 2060 Super cards will run cooler and quieter. But as I noted earlier, that's very much down to the AIB models you compare, and both the MSI Gaming X and PowerColor Red Devil ran very quiet. Another reason why you might buy the 2060 Super would be for video encoding, either as a content creator or someone who streams gameplay, and you want your graphics card to do the heavy lifting. Nvidia's encoder is significantly better in terms of quality, and right now it's faster to boot. You're looking at about a 25 to 35% performance uplift over the 5700 XT in applications such as DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere. So while the focus of this video has been on gaming performance, if your needs go beyond just gaming, the 5700 series might not be the best choice. So be aware of that and make sure you research your use case. AMD can certainly improve Navi's video encoding performance, but they'll need to work on that at the driver level, and I'm not particularly confident that we'll see them do that anytime soon. And speaking of drivers, this is my third and probably my final reason why you might be better off with the 2060 Super. I've heard lots of reports from alleged 5700 owners complaining about driver issues. On our end, we've run into very few issues, particularly recently. That said, I did run into two annoying issues with this video, though it is hard to say if this is a widespread issue and what the cause ultimately was. The first issue was seen when I swapped from the 5700 XT to the non-XT model as I just wanted to confirm a few of the results we'd seen. So yeah, doing so, I powered up the system, it powered on just fine, uh, the Windows 10 loading screen came up, and then upon what would have been loading into the Windows desktop, I was just presented with nothing but darkness, just a blank black screen and nothing more. I let the system sit there for 20 minutes, maybe it was detecting the graphics card, waiting for it to do that, and then hopefully everything would flash up, but unfortunately that didn't happen, so I forced uh, the system to reboot. And upon doing so, we got the Windows load screen, black screen, reboot again, uh, reboot again load screen, black screen. So that sucked. Uh, at that point, I wasn't sure what to do. So I simply just changed the display port that I was using. So I moved from the far right one to the far left one, booted the system up and lo and behold, the Windows desktop appeared. So I thought that was a bit bizarre. I then shut the system down again, went back to the original display port to see if it was broken or something happened with the graphics card and it booted into Windows and worked just fine. So. That was very annoying, frustrating if I hadn't thought to change the port. I mean, it's a pretty simple way to diagnose the problem, but kind of annoying. But again, I don't know if that was just an issue with the particular graphics card, the, the power color red devil. Is it a driver issue? Not sure. Maybe it's just a problem with Windows 10, but I never, I've never encountered this before and I haven't encountered it with a GeForce GPU. So I'm not sure if it's just a Radeon GPU issue or whatever, like I said, hard to say, but it was annoying all the same. The second issue was another one of those sort of annoying ones, not really sure what caused it, but it was performance related. So yeah, that's very annoying, especially for the type of work we do. So a day after completing my uh, testing, I booted up the system, 
again, just to check a few numbers and make sure everything was okay, because there was a few weird numbers here and there. So put in the 5700 XT, booted into Windows, installed the drivers, rebooted, and back into Windows to begin testing. So I ran, it was about three or four games I wanted to check out, and oddly, the performance in those three or four games was all down around 10 to 15% on the numbers that I'd collected the previous day. So that was kind of annoying and weird. It's always very concerning when we can't get accurate numbers. So I checked things like CPU performance, the rest of the system, everything was running as it should be. The CPU was performing as expected. So that was, yeah, a bit bizarre that. But anyway, again, simple fix. I just reset the computer, rerun the tests, and they were back to normal. I reset a few more times just to make sure there wasn't some kind of bug there. But after about three or four more resets, I was getting the same numbers. So yeah, something to look out for when testing these graphics cards in benchmarks. But yeah, it's not an issue I've encountered before. And again, it's hard to pin this one on AMD and their drivers. But again, it's not something I've seen before and it's definitely not something I've ever encountered with a GeForce GPU. Still, for the most part, the potential driver issues or Radeon hiccups haven't been that bad. And really overall, the 5700 series has worked very well for us when gaming. So at least based on our own experiences, the current driver support doesn't cause us to second guess recommending either the 5700 or 5700 XT. On the gaming side, the RTX 2060 Super does have the advantage of ray tracing support, at least on paper. In reality though, I don't feel the ray tracing support of the 2060 Super is all that useful at present. Not just because the list of ray tracing enabled games is extremely short, but more because the performance in those games is just horrible. Nvidia has told me that the best implementation of this technology yet can be seen in control, and I'd probably agree with that. Thing is though, at 1080p you won't even average 60fps using the 2060 Super with high quality ray tracing. I should note though that DLSS does help here and the DLSS version used in this game does look reasonably good. It also doesn't use tensor cores which is mildly amusing, but at least it's not a blurry mess and with DLSS enabled you can push over 60fps at 1080p so that's something. I should also note though that I'm not quite sure how DLSS compares to basic resolution scaling with a sharpening filter applied. Hopefully Tim will have time to look at this soon, but as I said, at least DLSS isn't a hot mess in this title. Now, for those of you wanting to play Control at the more suitable 1440p resolution for a $400 US graphics card, and let's be honest, for those of you spending $400 US on this thing, you probably wanna play games like Control at 1440p over 1080p. May not be true for everyone, but I think it's fair to say that will be what the vast majority of you are looking at. And if that is the case, you'll be lucky to see over 50 FPS with DLSS enabled. It's still playable, but not exactly the experience I'd be after with a semi-premium graphics card. In short, the 2060 Super is a little over 70% faster with ray tracing disabled, and I'm sorry, but while the effects do look nice, they simply aren't worth that kind of performance hit in my opinion. So unless the 2060 Super fulfills a specific need for you, I think you're just better off getting a 5700 series graphics card. I think that's the general consensus among reviewers. And that is gonna do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button for us. That'd be much appreciated, please. Uh, this video was a huge amount of work, especially after the previous two videos I'd done in, I suppose, what is now this series of, Super versus 5700 series uh, graphics cards. But anyway, if you appreciate the work we do at Hiram Boxed and you want to get more involved with the channel, chat with us on Discord, uh, partake in our monthly live streams, then yeah, jump over to our Patreon account. Link is in the video description. You can also buy Harbour Unbox merch. We've got some mugs, hoodies, t-shirts, all that kind of cool stuff. But yeah, above all else, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>